Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and today we're going to take a look at Fittis in Cape Town, including who won, who got their invites to the CrossFit Games, and what we've learned about the sanctionals now that we're actually four sanctionals in. That's kind of crazy, right? Let's begin with the teams. So the team competition was really a race between Vondel Gym, which is a team from the Netherlands, and Superhero Project, a team from Sweden. And they were neck and neck essentially the entire time. It really was just a race between the two of them throughout the entire four day competition. And at the end, it was just a handful of points. I think the final tally is only four point difference between Vondel Gym, who won Fittis in Cape Town, and Superhero Project, who came in second. In third place is actually a local team, South African team, the Jacked Rebels. So they you know, were able to get on there and actually represent the, the community a little bit, which is great, especially considering how huge the field of teams were. I mean, we're talking almost 90 teams. They actually had to change around the scoring system in order to accommodate such a large field of competitors. On the women's side of the competition, Catcher and Dave's daughter has come out on top and earned an invite to the CrossFit Games which should not come as a surprise. She's won the CrossFit Games uh, you know, twice in the past. She's placed fifth and third in the past couple years. It's really not that big of a shock that she's the best CrossFit in this field, but I think what really speaks to the level of competition that is at these sanctioned events, as well as how good an event like Fittis in Cape Town was, was at programming these events, is the fact that going into the final day, the overall rankings, it still had, you know, first place Katrin Davis Otter, second place Mia Acklin, third place Alessandra Pacelli, which is how the final podium was, but the the points difference between Katrin and Mia Ackerlin was actually only about five or six points, which really means that it was up in the air. She didn't run away with the competition as you would expect someone like her to run away with the competition. It was it was absolutely a tight race. And it was only on the final day that she was able to really claim and hold on to that pole position. On the men's side of the competition, Sean Sweeney, the CrossFit Cowboy, has taken it. And he did so in a really powerful way. I mean, the people that he beat, so second place Cole Sager, third place James Newberry. Newberry just won the Australian CrossFit Championships last weekend and was still here to compete, still took third place, which is incredibly impressive. Cole Sager, he was in the top 10 in CrossFit Games, absolute beast when it comes to competing in that type of a field. But Sean Sweeney, he's actually never beaten either James Newbery or Cole Sager at the games. And that is really impressive because going into the final day of competition, Sweeney wasn't even in first place. He was in second place with a little bit of a gap, a small gap between him and Cole Sager, who's in the lead, which means that on the day it counted most, Sean Sweeney was able to step up and compete very hard in order to take that spot. And that I think is yet again, just another example of what these sanctional competitions are bringing to the table that we didn't necessarily see at other events, things like regionals in the past. So one thing you may have learned from this weekend about Sean Sweeney is that when it comes time to competing, the man can compete. He's really fit in the gym, but there's something about the competitive field, there's something about that environment, whether it's the stress of it, whether it's the ability to perform for people, whatever that looks like, when there's points on the line, Sean Sweeney generally outperforms what you would expect him to be able to do. And he was able to do that to spectacular fashion. I mean, earning an invite to the CrossFit Games two weeks after competing at Wadapalooza with all the injuries that he's racked up over the past few years and against a field that included you know, top 10 CrossFit Games talent like Cole Sager and really aggressive, solid CrossFit Games athletes down the line, it's, it's more and more impressive to see what Sean Sweeney is able to do. But that said, I think one of the really fascinating things about this is that we've seen four sanctionals so far, Dubai, Wadapalooza, Australian CrossFit Championship, and Fittis in Cape Town. And where all the regionals were essentially the exact same, and they had to be the exact same, after it all got normalized under CrossFit HQ's umbrella, what we saw was this mandated regionals experience from the top down, and everyone basically knew what to expect. Three days, you know, there's gonna be six or seven events. Uh, if there's seven events, then there's events that are paired together. It just, it seemed like the formula had been answered. Whereas before 
regionals were all normalized and now that the sanctioned events are not normalized uh, in any way from the top down, we're starting to see a difference in flavor. Some of these events are shorter, some of them are longer, some of them have more outdoor events, some of them have less, some of them are heavier, some of them are lighter. I mean, I think the best thing about this is these differences showing up from various sanctioned events. They're able to really lean into the things that make them unique and sort of just say, hey, this is our stamp on what we think it takes to be one of the fittest on earth. And that's really interesting to see. I think just just having those differences alone makes this a much more exciting competitive season. Real quick, let's take a look at who has earned their individual invite to the CrossFit Games because I think there's some interesting stuff here to see. On the men's side, the four athletes are Matt Fraser out of Dubai and uh, Patrick Vellner out of Wadapalooza, James Newberry out of Australia's CrossFit Championship, and finally Sean Sweeney out of Fittis in Cape Town. And on the women's side, we had Sam Briggs, uh, who won in Dubai, Tia Clartumi, who won in Wadapalooza, uh, Maddie Sturt, who is going to get the invite uh, out of Australian CrossFit Championship, and finally now Katrin Davids uh, who is a winner in Fittis in Cape Town. Here's the crazy part. Of the four women's qualifiers, three of them are former champions. Of the men's qualifiers, one of them is a former champion, and of the eight total competitors, Four of them stood on the podium individually last year at the CrossFit Games. Two on the men's side, that's Matt Fraser and Patrick Bellner, and two on the women's side, that's Tia Claire Toomey and Katrin David's daughter. So the invited athletes so far, the ones that have gotten their spots out of the sanctioned events that we've seen, that's a really, really, really fit group of people. I mean, we're talking the cream of the crop has already gotten their invites. And obviously all of this stuff is gonna shuffle up once we see how the open pans out because you know athletes who have already earned these qualification spots very likely are going to be pushing for national champion spots or for a top 20 in the worldwide open. So these things are gonna adjust, but I just wanted to take a look very quickly at who these athletes were and just to remind you that this isn't diluting the field of competitors at the top end of the CrossFit Games in any way at all. And we're still seeing the best of the best earning their spots to compete at the Games. And while some of these sanctioned events might be a little bit smaller and the competitive fields might not be as deep as something like regionals were in the past, I think we're going to see a lot of that change as the seasons sort of progress and people start realizing where the value is for them to try and you know shoot their shot if you if you would remember folks there's a whole lot going on in our space and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories that is what i am here for and before i say i'll see you guys next time i just wanted to say again thank you very much to everybody who's watching sharing liking it means a lot to me i love doing this i love sharing all this information with you i love interacting with you guys on instagram and over youtube and stuff i really appreciate it and i recently got a whole box of these shirts delivered to me from CrossFit HQ and I'm gonna do a giveaway so keep your eyes open there's gonna be various you know ways of doing this so I'm gonna have one for YouTube we're gonna have one for Instagram so if you're not already you know make sure to you know keep your eyes open and uh, I'll be giving away a whole bunch of those little CrossFit world sanctional shirts and I have a bunch of different designs some of them are tank tops some of them have like the tour on the back like it's a metal band or something either way i hope you guys enjoy this i'll see you guys next time